This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Flagstaff Microlite model number 25 FBS. Okay, so we'll start right here. So you have a power stabilizer jack. So you have one switch here operates both rear and then the switch up front operates both front. Okay? You have also obviously have two uh, entry doors. Now this here, this quick connect here is for a quick connect, is a quick connect LP fitting down there. That's where you plug your grill into. So when you when you hang it here, you also have a, a black uh, LP line that connects into the back the grill and then to that quick connect down there. Okay. Um, this is just TV signal out plus power plus a plate to mount it on if you want to put a TV outside. Um, this is the vent for the range hood. So keep in mind if you're venting the range hood to the outside uh, using the fan, you want to push up on both those little latches there so the baffle inside flaps freely and it can vent, it can vent outside it freely. Otherwise you keep it shut when you're traveling down the road or storage, keep, keep it shut. But open it up when you want to vent. You have outside speakers, you got a power uh, awning with LED strip. Of course these ladders here, or excuse me, these stairways here, uh, you can adjust the legs on them just by pushing this lever here up. There's one on each side so you can adjust it to the terrain. Okay. Let's see what we have here. This is just this table here. This metal table is um oh, let me pull this out of here. Let's see what we've got in here. Hold on. Yeah. This stuff should be inside the trailer. I'll I'll take that in with me when I go. That's just your your uh attachments and, and things like that. So you have a table. There's your um, rack that your griddle hangs on, if you can see it. Your dump hose, of course. There's a reducer to reduce your 30 amp cord down to a 15 slash 20. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Just storage. Okay, there's your other uh, landing, or uh, excuse me, stabilizer uh, switch for the front. Now you have a, a power tongue jack which is a great thing to have and if this ever fails there's a crank that comes with this you can pull this plug off of it and crank it manually if you have to. You have um, two deep cycle marine batteries they're wired together as 12 volt so it just doubles the storage capacity so um, it's, this is considered one battery although it's two. On your monitor panel it'll be considered as one battery. Also down here you can see behind the tank there's a, right there, there's a, a kill switch for the battery, right? So you want to turn that on and off. I mean, if you shut it off, or let's put it this way, the only time you're going to shut it off is when you put it in storage. All other times you keep it on so it can charge when you're towing it or charge when it's plugged in, that sort of thing. So, or the sun can charge it. So you just want to um, make sure it's only off when you're in storage. All right. You have a, two uh, LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. Alrighty, now, let's see, we already saw this side, but I'll, let me just look in here. Yeah, just another another storage. There's docking lights right there. Um, now, the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup. But, if you go to a campground that does not have a city water on it, it doesn't have uh, any plumbing at all, you can pre-fill this fresh water tank by, by taking this cap off and filling it there. So you can pre-fill it, and then just use the onboard pump to pump the water. And everything will work just like you have. All the plumbing will work like you have a city water hookup. All right, let me see what we got here. That's your griddle slash, um, well, it's a griddle, not a grill, because it's got the hard surface on it. And there's your, your hose that I told you about. Okay. So that hangs right on the rail on the other side. All righty. Your fresh water drain is right down there. You can see it's like a white gate valve right there really dumps it quickly it'll come it'll come whooshing out of there your cord is a 30 foot 30 amp cord okay now this is your city water hookup right here is the most common way to get water to the trailer okay 
you also have the tank fill in the back that I just showed you. Now this hit here is used for winterizing. So you'll draw the antifreeze in through this line uh, from a gallon jug. So you know that. And there is a switch on the back of this by the water pump that where you select this line. The water pump can either draw through this, this line here, pull antifreeze into the system, or it can draw from the fresh water tank. You have to select it with the valve. Okay. And this is the black tank flush here. So after you've dumped your gray and black tank, the uh, gray on the right, the black on the left, of course gray is toilet water and waste. I'm sorry, black is toilet water and waste, gray is sink and shower water. So you always dump the black first, then the gray, because it's cleaner water than the black. You leave the black valve open, then you can put your hose at the dump station right on there, and you can uh, flush out the tank really, really well. Those are low point drains. That's just uh, for, for winterizing and dewinterizing. You got an outside shower for spraying things down. Uh, this, this housing here tells us we're pre-wired for a backup camera. Okay, you have a ladder, which is a great thing because it makes it easy to uh, inspect your roof. The manufacturer states that you should inspect it every 90 days. So, you know, you figure in the springtime, once in the middle of summer and once in the fall, you'll go up there, look at all the, all the ceiling on the roof, make sure there's no crack in your separation, make sure nothing was damaged by road debris or low branches, just give it a good inspection. And if you see an issue, take care of it immediately. Okay. You also have a, a receiver back here to put a, you know, bike carrier, a, a platform, whatever you, whatever you want to put on the back. Just don't exceed the weight limitations. I don't know exactly what they are, but I'd have to read it, but I'm sure there's a sticker back there. Okay, so let's go inside. Okay. All right. Nice. Actually, the first time I've been in this model. I'm going to close the door to keep the cool in. Okay, this is very nice. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of Flagstaffs. I've been working with them for... I don't know, over a decade anyway, so I'm partial to them. Okay, so let's start right here. Lots of storage. Great. This device down here is your power converter. Um, you have both a converter and an inverter on this trailer. This is the power converter. It converts AC to DC power. This is the switch for the inverter, which does just the opposite. It turns 12 volt DC into 110 AC. Now he's inverting power right now, but you don't want to do that unless you need to. So we're going we're gonna to shut it off just like that. No reason inverting the power from your battery when you don't need it. Okay, so we'll go back over to the converter. So what this does, it converts 12, or 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you got regular uh, circuit breakers like you'd see at home right here. 110 AC and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You got 12 volt fuses and um, they're all labeled. If the fuses blow, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. And also these 240s are the master. So if something goes wrong, you get a lightning strike or a power surge and the 12 volt side goes out, always look at these 240s right here because that's where the problem is going to be. All right. Also, the other thing to know about this it's a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your batteries need. If they're charged up, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there, but if it's low, if they're low, it'll send, you know, 10 or 15 or whatever it needs. So it, it's sort of smart in that sense. It won't, uh, it won't send any of your power up there that's not needed. Okay. While we're here, this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector right here. It detects carbon monoxide buildup, LP gas buildup, leak, whatever. Um, and also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So I'm going to set it off with a go through all three tests here. LP, now carbon monoxide coming up. And low battery alarm. Okay. Um, and then back to green. It should always be green. Of course, if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the doors open, shut the gas off of the front and figure out what's going on. Um, the reason it beeps for to tell you your battery's low because it's a safety device that runs off the battery. This is actually hardwired to the battery, um, so uh, it's just uh, 
it just if your battery gets low, it, this will not work correctly. So just warning you that it doesn't have enough power to, to function correctly. Okay, because it is a safety device. All right, let's see where we're at here. So that was that was the converter. Now over here is the inverter. This is just the switch for it. The the inverter is in the, under the panel here. So basically, this there's one plug that'll invert, and it'll be it'll be uh, usually on there. This is probably gonna be this one right here. See at the bottom it says inverter. So this plug right here will invert 12. You can plug in a, a let me say you can plug a 110 AC appliance into that plug and run it off the battery. Okay. That's inversion. So, you know, before you do that, though, you would turn this button on. Always hold the button to turn it on and off. There's a, like a delay on it, so you can't just poke it real quick. Okay, also over here, there's a charger station here with cigarette lighter plugging in two USBs. Okay. I guess while we're standing here, I'm not going to bring this down, the bed down. We'll do that when you pick up. So this, this um, video is not a sales video. It's not a floor plan video. Um, it's people talk about how crude it is well, but it does what it's supposed to do all this is does is show show you through your trailer Shows you the features how they work and tell I can tell you a little bit about them at times whatever But it that's all it's the, the, the videos uh, intended to do. It's not a, a showcase type video, okay? So anyway, you will jackknife this couch flat. It also has footrests on it by the way You can see the releases there, but you can jackknife this flat and then the the uh Hide a bed comes right over the top. I think the hide a bed's a great thing because uh, you know you re you reclaim the floor space during the day that was taken up, is taken up by your bed. You do that, it's like having a much bigger trailer. It's it's a really really good solution. So keep in mind that that knob up there is your is your um, release lever. Once this is in a down position, the knob will be down here. Okay, over in this area. Never force the bed up. Always pull the release knob first. Because if you, if you don't, eventually if you pull hard enough, you'll bend this shaft. So you just want to always release it first. They just have it on there so if you get all the way up to the front, it won't close you in there. Or throw, or at least, you know, attempt to anyway. So, okay. Alrighty. So let me look around a bit more here. I still not see in the control panel. I don't know if I went right past it or what I did here. I think I'd be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me look here. Just gonna look around. Okay. It's a mystery. Let me come back over this way. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Okay, so I'll move on until I stumble across it. Obviously, it's not gonna show itself right now. Very strange. I know it's it's tucked away somewhere. Let me try this. Nope, not there either. I tell you. Okay. Well, anyway, this is your thermostat here. It's just an analog thermostat. This is for the fan. You want it always on auto, and you can put it on heat, off, fan, or cool, which is air conditioning. The fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor, so it just circulates air. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to set the temperature high or lower if you're changing from heat to AC and that sort of thing. Now this panel here is for your is your solar panel. Um, right now, this is telling you it's got an, a gel battery in it, which is not true. Um, I'm just going to see if I can switch it here for you. Oh, it's flashing. Right that way. Anyway, I'll do it while, while we're off camera anyway. This should say flooded because of flooded batteries. Our technician just didn't change it over yet, so I'll take care of that. Okay, so your battery's charged 100%. I don't know if you can see the screen or not. It shows a picture of the sun and a picture of the solar panel, right? Just use B because there's not two batteries on here. It's just wired as one, like I told you. So uh, right now, um, you've got 12, 122 amp hours um, that away, and your output in your batteries are putting out 13.3 volts, which is excellent. And right now we're getting 9.1 amps from the sun. You see the sun, the arrow pointing towards the uh, the um, panel on this on here. So right now it's a it's really cranking. So you're getting 9.2 amps that's going into the storage in your battery. So that's good. 
You also can put a, in an emergency, you can use a solar panel to charge your phone by plugging it in there and uh, so on and so forth. So it, it, just, it just tells you basically amp hours. It tells you if your battery is charged and uh, how many volts are in it. And then it tells you how many amps you're gaining from the sun. Okay. All right. So here we are still wondering where they... This is crazy. I told you I'd never seen this model before. I've never seen one where I couldn't find the, the, the uh, uh, control panel for it. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, I'll keep looking. How crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, well, here's your sound system and your TV, of course. So keep in mind, you can use CDs and DVDs in here. You can stream off the USB here. You can also also stream wirelessly using your using your Bluetooth from your phone or your tablet. You can stream uh, wherever you want. You can go into the system. Oh, wait a minute. Also, there's an AM FM radio, but you can go into the system through this HDMI here. So if you wanted to use a a, a, a Blu-ray player, let's say on a rainy day, a portable one, you can just set it on the counter, plug it in, and then run the cable right up to there, and it'll go right into the system. So it also has two speaker zones. This one's showing three. But I'm sure one and two are both just in this room. Three is going to be outside. Keep in mind, Z3 means zone three, which is outside speakers. You can set the volume and the source separately from the inside speakers by pushing the zone three button and then setting them. So you could, lot, you could watch a DVD in here while somebody else is listening to the radio outside. Okay. Um, and it has AM FM radio, like I said, so it does what, what um, most radios will do. So, okay. Um, now the TV itself, it pulls out, let me get a good look back here, I just got to do it with one hand, it's kind of difficult. Okay, so here, if you can see around here, this, this has got a light here, this is the signal booster for your digital antenna, it should always be on when you're trying to watch antenna, so keep that in mind. If it's not, you just push the button and it'll, and it'll light up, um, otherwise you won't get a good signal. With it, you'll get a great signal. Okay, now I'm sheepishly looking for the, uh, the control panel, considering I'm pretty much looked everywhere I can think of looking. Is that strange or what? Well, let me do this again. I hate to go through everything again for you, but... Oh, gosh, it was right in front of me the whole time. Okay, well, I feel... I don't know if I feel better or worse right now, but either way. So, okay, so the first thing to know is this has a Wi-Fi Ranger. There's the switch right there. The Wi-Fi Ranger is a signal booster. It's an antenna and a router, right? So basically, you would you'll put your it's it's you use it to get better public Wi-Fi, stronger signal, wider bandwidth. You um basically you'll put the password for the Wi-Fi Ranger into all your family's devices, phones and and tablets, right? Um, then. Well, when you're doing that, you'll go to this top line here on the sticker that says it's called, I can barely see it now, it's Tenton, I think it says six or 3620. Um, so you look on your phone in the Wi-Fi until you see that, and that's where you're going to hook up to it, right? So you put those passwords in your devices. Then the bottom line here is the control panel for it. It's online. So you type this address into a browser and go to the web page for this Wi-Fi Ranger. The temporary password has changed me now. Uh, 3620 it looks like so you'll put your own password in that something everybody in the family knows of course and so what you do is is when you get to the campground let's say or any public Wi-Fi you'll go to that website you punch put, or put that address into a browser you'll go there and you'll be able to see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees you'll pick out the campground Wi-Fi for example if they give you a password you'll type in the password and then the Wi-Fi Ranger connects to the to the public Wi-Fi and then all your devices automatically change connect to the Wi-Fi Ranger. So it's like I said, it's got a built-in firewall and it's a really good signal booster. Now there is a second function that not a whole lot of people use, but this would be between you and your carrier, whoever carries your cellular service. You could actually get a SIM card for it and have cellular service too, but that's something you'd have to pay for monthly, of course. The Wi-Fi thing is free. All right. And when you turn it on, I always give it about a minute to warm up. So your water pump is right here. That's for winterizing the trailer and for pumping water out of the fresh water tank. Your water heater on gas here. Your water heater on electric here. And plus you have heated tanks. So it's got a winter package in it. You turn them on and your tanks warm up so it doesn't, they don't freeze 
you know, you can stay out later in the fall and go out earlier in the spring, for example. Uh, you have your slide out button here, your power awning button here. Keep in mind, you never leave the power awning out unattended. Always bring it in. Um, lights here, right? And uh, your level. So batteries charged. Fresh water has two thirds in it still. Black water tank is empty. Gray water tank is empty. Obviously, as it graduates up in one third increments as it, as it fills, they light up. When you get to two thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping the black and the gray tank. Okay, so there's the, the long lost control panel there, which uh, my, my eyes refuse to see. Okay, so let me look around a bit here and see what I've, I've covered. Um, that's your power converter, uh, AC to DC power. Inverter, DC to AC power. Your solar panel monitor right there and thermostat. Now this is your refrigerator, which is a 12 volt DC refrigerator. So this runs on 12 volts. So when you're plugged in at the campground, your power converter is going to be supplying the 12 volts for it. When you're pulling it down the road, your batteries will be supplying the 12 volt and your, your tow vehicle will be charging the batteries with its alternator. So that's how it'll stay cool when you're traveling. So um, the advantage to having this over a gas absorption refrigerator that runs on a gas also is that it's much, this is much deeper. If, if you had a, um, an absorption free refrigerator, it would stop about right here and there would be fins there. But this one goes back much deeper so you get more, more cubic feet inside of the freezer and the uh, refrigerator compartment. So, Okay, so you, these also chairs also power. You see it's got, it's got the uh, controls there, plus you see where it plugs in back there. Um, let me look around and see what I forgot, if anything. Okay. It looks good actually. Um, the range it runs on gas, of course. I don't know if he's got the gas turned on or off. Either way, I'll just talk you through it if he, if he hasn't shut off. But you're just going to go to light and then you're going to spark it. It lit. So you turn this sparker, which is all the way to the left, foremost left knob, you turn it clockwise to spark it. Okay, so you got three knobs for the three burners. Then your oven. Now the oven has a pilot light in it at the bottom all the way to the back. I can spark it, you usually you can see it back there, okay? So what you do is you come over here to the oven knob, which is all the way to the right. You go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot light. Then you depress it and hold it. You hold it, hold it through the lighting procedure. So then you'll spark this by turning it clockwise until the pilot light down here lights. Once it lights, you still hold this in for another 10, 15 seconds or so to heat it up. And uh, then you go to operating temperature and it cycles on and off as an oven does. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the oven each time you use the pilot light. Okay, and always travel with this glass top down. Okay, this is the, the range hood uh, light and fan. Remember I told you there's a baffle on the, uh, on the um, outside vent that you can open up so it flaps freely and you can really uh, vent to the uh, outside unobstructed. Remember I told you up here is a, a switch for your signal booster for the antenna. If you're going to be using over the air, you want to turn that on. Campground cable, you can just shut it off. Okay, so I think we've covered everything now. Let me look around. I think the bathroom is pretty much all that's left. Okay, microwave works like any other microwave. Okay, so sink and the shower are the same as any other sink and shower, except you have this right here, though, the water miser. What this is is a recirculator. The idea is that you, you don't waste fresh water or city water by just letting it run down the drain while you're waiting for it to heat up. This circulates the, around a loop, the same water, till it heats up. After it heats up, this will change color. I think if this one goes to a lighter blue, I think you'll notice a drastic change though, and you'll know it's heat, that's telling you it's heated up. Then you change the position of it, and uh, it'll run like a regular shower. But you don't waste the water heating it up. It just loops around. And also, you don't waste storage space down in your black tank, right? The shower water's in your, I'm sorry, your gray tank. So, so, uh, uh, shower water goes to the gray tank, so um, if it, all this water was just running down the drain while you're waiting to heat it up, it also would be taking up space, storage space in your tank. So, so, two, so it saves storage space in your tank and, and it doesn't waste water. So keep that in mind. I want, I want to tell you that everything in here that I'm showing you, if you have information inside the packet, but you also can go to manufacturer's videos, and that's a great place for uh, information also. 
Uh, you have a four speed vent here. Keep in mind, always run the vent at least on low when you're using the shower because this trailer is built super tight and you want to pull the humidity out so you don't create a, you know, conditions where you, you might get mold or mildew. So make sure you vent it. That's an access panel for, for your water pump, I'm sure. If not, it's, it's some kind of plumbing. I, I didn't prep this trailer, so, but that's what it is. Keep in mind, all the screws on this, this uh, trailer are number two square headed screws. So, okay, so the toilet here, there's the flush pedal right there, right, if you can see it, hopefully. The only thing you need to know about this, if you don't already know, is you can't use it dry. I'm stepping on the pedal. By dry, I'm talking about the black tank, which is directly below. So what happens is this. When you get to the campground, you're going to hook up the power and the water. And um, when the uh, when you get inside, you're going to dump a, one dose of chemical in here. And then you're going to step on the pedal and let about a gallon of water go into the tank. Okay. Um, the reason you do that because it, if it has to have water in it to operate correctly, otherwise it'll get a really bad smell, really bad smell, and also uh, it can get clogged up. So you always start off with water, a gallon or so in the tank, some people use more, a gallon or so of water in the tank plus chemical. All right? All righty. I think that does it now. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And um, let me do one more thing here. I'm sorry. I forgot I brought this in. Now, there, this has a water filter canister. Um, remember I showed you under the sink where that panel was? There'll be a water filter canister. And there's, you also get a wrench here. Right. So if you want to use this filter, you got to change it every year. Remember that. Um, these are just toilet paper uh, holders and things like that. Most people will use a, uh, the, the portable type. Also, you got the other side of the, of the TV mount for outside. So that's just extra stuff in there, okay? All right. So one other thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this is this is for your tires and your wheels. It tells you your tire pressure, and it tells you uh, the temperature. So and it has an alarm on it. So we'll show you how that works when you pick up your trailer. But that's so you can monitor your the temperature and the pressure in your tires and, and wheel, okay? All right, so there we go. Okay, so I want to thank you for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please keep what I, in mind what I said about um, going up there and inspecting the roof every 90 days. That's very important when you own a trailer. If you do that and you take care of the, the roof, water will never get inside. It'll be bone dry 20 years from now. So make sure you take good care of uh, when it comes to inspecting it and touching up if needed, and you'll be, you'll be in good shape. Okay, thank you.